Thanks, Ed. Uh, oh, excellent. Um, thank you very much for inviting me uh, to this to this event. Um, it's a pleasure to be here. It's my first time, like many, in the in Newfoundland, and I have have to say it's been an amazing experience. Um, so I'm I'm thrilled to be here. Um, I have enjoyed meeting a whole host of people. It's been fantastic. Um, what I'm going to talk to you about today is really a, a pretty simple story, and it's the story of uh, our work at IBK Capital over the past 25 years and how we have funded um, junior, mid-tier, um, and your production uh, resource opportunities through a multitude of cycles. Um, I'm going to tell you a little bit about IBK, um, who we are. How does, do you just, yeah, Perfect. Um, so IBK is a private Toronto-based investment bank. Um, we were founded in 1989. It was three people, um, essentially the corporate mining finance team from Merrill Lynch Canada, who when Merrill Lynch was pulling out of, out of Canada back to New York, um, they decided, look, we've, we've done work in this space. We've done it for a decade. Um, so we're going to set up our own shop. Um, we operate uh, under the private capital market um, exemption. We're an exempt market dealer. So we focus on um, essentially sitting between issuers and uh, money. So uh, we can only uh, approach institutions, private equity, um, accredited investors. So our pool is slightly smaller, but um, we have a, a good group of people um, that we've worked with over the last 25 years. Um, I've spent a lot of time in Europe over the last five years building out a, a new network um, of, of investors. Um, to date, we've raised $800 million in equity for uh, um, juniors, um, which is uh, quite exceptional, I think, for a team of 12. Um, and the total transaction value has been $5.6 billion. Um, I've been at IBK for 20, 20 years, so I've seen uh, lots of things, um, lots of interesting things, <laughs> lots of frightening things. Um, but um, I'm going to talk to you about... Um, how we have uh, carved out a niche for ourselves and how we've been successful in, in funding um, particularly junior resource companies because that's where uh, we believe um, you can have the potential for the greatest return on your investment. Uh, we need to fund those exploration companies because um, they are the ones that are driving um, the assets uh, forward. Okay. Uh, just quickly, private capital markets. Um, this is pretty self just pretty self-explanatory. I just ran through it. We, um, we act as an agent. Um, we are allowed uh, to put money into all the transactions that we work on, so we have skin in the game, uh, which is important, and it makes for a very different approach, I think, when you're working with companies. When you've got your own money, <laughs> your own money invested, um, you're not just representing um, investor clients, um, you're representing your own funds. So um, that's been an interesting opportunity for all of us at IBK to participate in these transactions. So what I'm going to talk about is, um, the title was Financing Through the Cycle, Short-Term Pain for Long-Term Game. And yesterday there was um, obviously discussion. We saw a lot of um, information and data on where we are. We all know where we are. We all understand that it's been uh, a terrible couple of years, uh, especially for juniors. But um, I think, um, and this echoes the sort of vision of IBK, um, that there is real opportunity here in, in the bottom of, of the cycle. Um, I'm going to show you a number of examples of the companies we've worked with um, uh, over this cycle, over the last, say, 12 to 18 months, and uh, three examples of companies we worked with previously on, um, on the, the end of the other cycle and the, and the upswing. So it's been, it's been interesting um, uh, for us um, because um, we've sort of been there before. We understand that... Um, we want to get an early work with these companies early on and, and really plant the seeds for the change in the next cycle. So what I'm going to do is set the stage a little bit today. today. Um, so this was interesting. Um, I just wanted to take a look back when I was going through putting this presentation together and take a look back um, because we did, we've, we financed companies really since the uh, 
early 1990s. But this was interesting to take a look at the price of gold and copper and see, you know, where we are uh, today and where we were. Right? We we actually one of the examples I used um, was the funding of a company in Mexico um, that we got involved in. The price of gold was $250 an ounce, and that company was eventually, I'll show you, bought out for $420 million. So. It was, it was an interesting opportunity and just to show you know, how we've come through this. Um, price, uh, price of gold, price of copper, also how the cash costs um, have changed over the last 15 years. Um, we all know that, but it, it kind of sets an interesting stage that um, you, know, you were making money in 2000, you, could, you know, 2008, 2012, and now we find ourselves, when we look at our all-in sustaining costs, um, um, those margins are very, very slim today. Um, the other interesting thing is we looked at um, M&A transactions over the last, uh, we tracked them on, a, on an annual basis. And this is just uh, data we've put together for a select group of gold companies uh, in production and in exploration. And you can see, um, you know, when the, when the cycle, we were hitting the bottom of the cycle in uh, 2000 and, uh, you know, early 2000s, just coming out of, a little bit out of BREX, the value, um, uh, how decrease the value was for those production assets and exploration that you could pick up um, assets for for a very very low um, dollar value per ounce of gold in the ground right so um, it was just interesting for us um, when we sat down to take a look at, at that these metrics all follow the cycle okay we saw this yesterday um, we can see where we are today the price of gold has come off copper um, uh, it just sort of supports the, cyclic, the cyclicality of, of, of our life. Um, a quick snapshot on, on mining and financing. You can see that over the last uh, three years, um, we've half the amount of money raised on the T, uh, TMX through the TSXV and TSX. Um, Toronto, um, that, the exchange is still the preeminent exchange for, for fundraising. Um, as you can see, almost 50% of the mining equity globally is, is, is funded through Toronto. Um, what we've seen, too, is the changing nature of these transactions. You know, instead of straight equity, um, you know, common shares, um, we're starting to see more work with um, uh, flow through, charitable flow through, the, the donation um, structure. Um, joint ventures, more royalty deals, more streaming. Um, so people are starting to um, and have needed to become creative in the way that they fund their companies uh, because it's just it's too difficult in many instances to go out and raise um, raise the equity. So you look for a strategic partner. If you're you know near term production, you look for uh, somebody who can uh, take your uh, commodity or offtake. Uh, so uh, we were just taking a look to see. Um, that yes, there still is money being raised, um, and I would have to say there still is money out there uh, for exploration companies, and a lot of a lot of it has to do with serendipity, timing, where you are, who you're working with. Um, I'll get into that a bit later. So what we were talking about, or what we've, is this paradox that um, that if you don't grow it, you have to mine it, right? And this is sort of the undercurrent theme that everything here, uh, chairs, you know, uh, tables, everything um, has a basis from mining, right? And if you don't mine it, you have to, uh, if, you, if you grow it, then you need to mine it in order to be able to get out of the ground, right? Um, we need mining uh, globally to support uh, construction, development, economic growth. Uh, we need it. But the paradox is that when you look at um, other uh, spaces like technology or oil and gas, Mining is actually a very small component, um, and this was interesting when we, I took a comparison of the top five oil and gas companies and the top five mining companies, and it, th that's just an aggregate addition of, of their market cap, and you can see that um, mining has a huge impact uh, on, on the world we live in, yet it represents such a small, a small chunk of, of, of global revenues and development. I mean, you look at the annual global mining revenues for 2013 was close to $900 billion. Um, the top five mining companies accounted for almost half of that, right? So, and when you look at oil and gas, you know, their market caps are, are th almost three times the size of mining, but we need it. We need it. We need to get those commodities out of the ground. We need to fund exploration. We need to fund development of these projects so we can continue to drive the global economy. 
Um, this is, everybody's familiar with <laughs> this line. Um, <laughs> what we've been dealing with for the last 10 years, really. Um, and we have financed, um, the example I used financed through all parts of this cycle. Um, and everybody remembers that precipitous drop in, in 2008. But we were still um, successfully funding companies um, you know, through 2007 into 2008, through that, that bottom. And then now, where the red arrow is where we are now, um, we are actively working with, with companies, raising funds, um, helping them put together strategies so they can continue to drive their projects forward. And really, the, the, the gold uh, chart speaks to that as well. Um, it also speaks to the cyclicality of this, of this business that we all are familiar with, that you're driving expiration to 10-year cycles, you know, from your first drill hole or first expiration into, into possible production. Um, so we think there's a huge amount of opportunity, a huge amount of opportunity now. The other thing that was interesting was um, why we need to fund why it's critical to fund um, exploration now. Um, you can see uh, the amount of gold that is produced, the new discoveries, and the price of gold. And you see the, the amount of production has dropped off. Um, there have been very few new discoveries, it's flat. So we really need to, we really need to encourage and support um, these junior exploration companies, uh, each and every one of them, um, to try and, and continue to, to develop the global asset base. Okay. So now back to this paradox of, of being um, critical to the global economy, but, but such a small component of it. So uh, how, do we, how do we do it, right? How do you go out and, and find um, these companies, how do you fund them? Um, how do you support them, right? So um, this, is what, this is what IBK does, this is what we do. Okay. So this is our approach. I think first and foremost, critical for us, um, obviously there has to be uh, some sort of uh, reasonable asset, but, but management. Management is, and I've traveled all across the world and taken companies through Europe and South America and all across North America. The underlying theme for every single meeting is management, right? Management, management, management is key. Do you have a, a team that is technically experienced? Do you have um, a president or CEO that has the understanding to drive the company forward, but also a team that understands once you get that company to a certain stage that you need to step away and bring in another group that can take that uh, um, project on uh, to further development and ultimately into the production. Commodity asset, we look obviously look at that. Um, the bulk of our work has been in precious and base metals. Um, so we have uh, tried to focus on that. We have done some work in diamonds, but found that a little, a little more complex. Uh, but bulk of the work of precious and base metals in, in North America and South America. So we're all familiar with this. Finding deposit, um, once you find it, there's all these, these underlying um, issues that you need to look at. Metallurgy, infrastructure, um, what's your relationship with the local, uh, the local people, the local communities? Um, can you work together? Uh, can you get to the project? Have you looked at the environmental? Uh, all that, Every, we all understand that. This is, this is, where, <laughs> this is where we come in. We are, we are the, the agents who will uh, give you access to capital, right? Um, and the other thing that's really critical and that we've seen with the companies we've been working with is this long-term vision. Uh, you know, one of the companies we, we work with, um, and we like to uh, take on uh, assignments and work long-term. So uh, you'll see from our track record that there are multiple financings, three, four, five, six, eight, ten, over five, six, seven, ten years, right? So we get in early, um, we sit down with a company, we work with them to raise that initial capital, and then we look towards that long-term vision. Well, where are you going? What are you going to do? And, and we will stay with that company until such time when we know that we can sort of pass the baton to the next level. This is where we, like I said, where we like to sit. We like to get in early, we like to participate early, identify those companies where we think we can add, um, through our team and skill set, the best, the best value. Okay. 
Okay. This is um, one example of a company that we funded uh, just before um, the market blew up in 2008. Um, Norant Resources, um, huge uh, project in the Ring of Fire in Northern Ontario, uh, very remote, um, no infrastructure. Um, we first started working with the company in, and I think the initial discussions were in 2003 and 4, and they were exploring for diamonds in Northern Ontario. And um, we, uh, the, sort of the sideline was the, the base metals, the, the nickel sulfide. And we did some initial financing for that work. And in 2007, they had their, um, they had their discovery hole, high grade uh, nickel sulfide. And from 2007 to 2009, I think in five financings, we raised them over $80 million. So um, the market was, was moving, there was lots of interest. Um, we did sequential financings, $20 million in December, we did one in February, and we did one in, in the following September. So back-to-back -back financings, lots of money, um, lots of uh, joy, lots of excitement, uh, the rush, there was a staking rush in Northern Ontario, um, and this is, this is what happened. So we started working with Norant in uh, 2004, so the stock was about 40 cents. You can see the discovery hole in 2007. Um, all the excitement, money raised, fast and furious, lots of work, stock went to $7. So getting in early, huge amount of value created um, uh, in the company. Um, and then uh, after the uh, market crashed, and sadly they've uh, continued on. And I think a lot of it has had to do with, with the the um, difficulties of working in, in that part of Ontario. Um, there's lots of discussion with the First Nations group, uh, lots of things that need to be resolved, community work, um, and the cost, and billions of dollars of infrastructure development um, to develop this asset. But to show you that, you know, when the cycle was booming and, and things were moving um, well, we got in, we got in early, we worked with the team, they had a technically savvy team, and then um, we were able to raise them that money. Um, what was interesting, uh, and it carries on to the work we did with Eagle Hill, is that their non-core asset, Windfall Lake, which was a gold project in Quebec, um, was the subject of essentially a proxy battle in 2008. And you can see after the market blew up um, and they divested themselves of the asset, um, it was Eagle Hill who six months later stepped in and consolidated the project. Um, so we had huge familiarity um, with their non-core asset as well, which uh, fed into a good amount of work for um, Eagle Hill. Okay, so current, what are we doing now? Augustine Ventures, um, a project near Wawa. Um, they have an option to earn a 75% interest. They have a really good strategic partner um, who has been very um, uh, uh, agreeable to working because we've, we've had to push out timelines on payments and exploration uh, expenditures. Uh, they have a historic resource, million, just over a million ounces, um, uh, 1.5 grams per ton. Uh, we, uh, they came to us um, with a, an, uh, a, their first management team. We raised a small amount of money for them, two and a half million dollars, to get things going. Uh, about 18 months ago, a new CEO stepped in, and he has really been the visionary uh, and the driving force behind moving this project forward. Um, uh, we've raised uh, three and a half million dollars to date in five fi financings. Um, again, speaking to getting in early, uh, planting the seeds for these companies. Um, and why Augustine? Well, we, we went up to Wawa, we took a look at the asset, and that's the other thing. We, we do spend a significant amount of time because you have to, we go to the project. We, we spend time with the technical team. We go and kick the tires. Um, because we see a, a multitude um, of companies every day coming through our door. So why, why Augustine and why not another one? Well, it was really, I think, a synergy of the management of the project um, and, and the strategic partner that they had in place. So again, standard chart for a, a junior um, today. Um, another company we're working with is um, PC Gold, who has uh, the old Pickle Crow mine uh, to northwest of Thunder Bay. Um, again, um, good management team, good technical team. Um, they have consolidated the camp, so there's lots of blue sky in and around the existing um, project. There's a mill on site, so there's infrastructure in place. Um, the other thing that we've done with these companies is, um, is be creative in the way that we finance them. Um, 
right now you're seeing five cent financings all it's the the bottom that you can go to but five cent financings plus warrants for four years right so a four a five cent warrant for four years right so giving you the potential for growth giving you that that idea of long term vision that we're we're here for the long term right we're going to fund you we're going to help you develop your asset we'll support you and um, we'll we'll support the vision that you have to develop this project Okay, PC Gold. So we've uh, this is a fairly recent uh, work. We are uh, we financed them just uh, shy of a million dollars in the spring, and we are uh, currently out on a on a, the next financing for them. Uh, I talked briefly Eagle Hill, the Windfall Lake asset in Quebec. Um, lots of historical work done by Norant and others. Uh, 700 drill holes. Um, they have a nice resource, high grade resource. Um, seven. Uh, yeah, near vertical parallel shear zones, lots of potential at depth and on strike. Um, we uh, started work with them in 2009, and we actually called them because after the project was spun out of Norant, um, we were familiar with it, and we knew that it was a, it was a good asset. It just needed to be, um, uh, you need to step back and take a, a different look at it, right? you know, taking Rubik's Cube and looking at the red side instead of the yellow side. Uh, so our first, uh, block of work with for Eagle Hill was in 2009 and we've raised 18 million dollars for them um, what is interesting to note too is that um, a good chunk of that money came out of Europe so um, there was a lot of interest that was in 2010 a lot of interest in junior uh, exploration at that time um, so uh, we're still working with them now uh, the stock has obviously come off um, that spike in 2010 was their I guess their discovery hole, drill hole 196, was high grade gold, 19 grams per ton over 30 meters, and um, uh, mineralization over 50 or 60 meters. So, um, lots of good opportunity. We financed them before and all through all through that. Um, so Eagle Hill, Eagle Hill has been a, a really interesting uh, story for us, and we're continuing to do work with them. They've just initiated their PEA, uh, so it'll be interesting to see how things unfold for that. Just quickly, these last um, uh, uh, three companies. So those three were the, the financing through this bottom of this cycle. So um, you're taking, as I said, the short-term pain, short -term pain of, of um, perhaps uh, significant dilution of, of your stock price bumping at all-time lows and, and not moving. But the vision is to, to fund these companies, raise a decent amount of these, uh, money for these companies so they can actually move those projects forward and that they will be well positioned when the cycle turns, right? and, and it will. Uh, so these, these groups will be further ahead um, when, when the time comes. Um, we did this with Capital Gold um, in, first contact was in 2003, Gold was 250 to 270. Um, they had acquired the El Shinate project for $55,000. Um, uh, previous work by Phelps Dodge and Kennecott. Uh, in 2009, um, they started a small scale production. We raised them essentially $19 million to put that project in, into production. Um, they acquired Nairi Gold to build their asset base in Mexico and then were acquired by Arico, uh, uh, Gammon, now Arico, in uh, 2011 for $420 million. So our funding that we did early on when, when um, the price of gold was low and, and we looked at it and thought, how can we actually make this work? And it was a lot of time spent with management, a lot of time spent with the technical team to, to drive it forward. Um, and Capital Gold was a real success. Um, they went on after uh, 2007 um, to get uh, debt financing through Standard Bank, uh, a debt facility, and they're now producing uh, 71,000 ounces of gold. Um, so that was a real, a really interesting um, project to work on. Uh, uh, and that you can see initial work, initial funding, we did at 20 cents and then 40 and then you can see the bump um, uh, when things got moving. Uh, last one, actually the last one. Uh, no, Palangio uh, Larder and Detour. Um, we worked with them to essentially bring the Detour Lake asset into uh, Detour Gold. Um, the first financing was done for Palangio at 10 cents uh, and um, yeah, we all know where Detour is now. It's a company with a billion-dollar market cap. Uh, so that was a very interesting um, 
uh, opportunity. And again, structuring joint venture, getting Franco Nevada involved, being creative in the structure of the financing, how to make it best work for all parties involved. Uh, this was a real success too, through um, a challenging part of the cycle, was the Mesquite Mine, um, which Western Goldfields acquired from Newmont. Um, the team came to us and said, we'd like to put it into production. Um, we got uh, funding of $15 million to get it moving. Uh, new management came in in 2006 and um, sort of transformed the company and moved it on to the next level. It was acquired by New Gold in 2009 for a uh, billion dollars. Uh, so uh, good opportunities, um, recognizing um, um, how to do it. Um, just quickly in summary, um, what do we look for? Management, ass uh, asset, access to capital, and your long-term vision. Um, go with the flow. This process, we all know this, the process is dynamic, but you, you have to be able to, I think, be nimble. Um, and I think that's why we've had success through these cycles, um, is to be nimble and be able to adjust as things move. Um, all sorts of personalities, have patience and perseverance to get through it. Um, Short-term pain, um, working with management who understands um, uh, how to be moderately aggressive in these kind of markets to set the stage for the next change in the cycle. Um, creative structures for financing, so planting the seeds for the next cycle, and really what we're looking at is, is wealth creation for everybody involved, right? Not just the shareholder, but uh, the communities, um, the impact, the, the uh, impact it has on uh, development, uh, project work. Uh, so um, that's IBK. Thank you.